You weren't supposed to see this coming. Nobody was. Not Washington. Not Brussels. Not even Amsterdam itself. But here we are. The Netherlands, one of America's closest allies, just made a move that could unravel the global semiconductor industry. And it's not backing down. One move. That's all it took to throw a wrench into America's tech war. And the fallout? That's what nobody's ready for. The Netherlands just defied U.S. pressure in a move that could shake global semiconductor supply chains. ASML, the Dutch tech giant controlling 90% of the global lithography market, was expected to fully comply with Washington's semiconductor export bans against China. Instead, Reuters reports that ASML continues shipping deep ultraviolet DUV machines, critical for chip production, to Chinese firms despite Washington's insistence. This decision undermines U.S. efforts to cripple China's semiconductor capabilities and raises serious questions. Is the Netherlands carving its own path, or is this economic brinkmanship? Former ASML CEO Peter Wenning previously warned that cutting China off entirely would only accelerate Beijing's domestic chip-making capabilities. And he may be right. China's Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, SMIC, recently produced a 7-nanometer chip despite U.S. restrictions. A feat. And the Wall Street Journal described as a wake-up call for Western tech dominance. If ASML continues exporting to China, is it prolonging its own market dominance or ensuring its own irrelevance? Forget oil, rare earth metals, or AI. ASML's extreme ultraviolet EUV machines are the single most valuable technology in the global semiconductor war. Each machine costs over $380 million and is required to manufacture the most advanced chips. Without them, China is stuck generations behind the U.S., Taiwan, and South Korea. That's why the Biden administration, through the CHIPS Act, pressured the Dutch government to block ASML from selling EUV machines to China entirely. But here's where things get complicated. ASML still dominates the market for older but still critical deep ultraviolet DUV lithography machines. The U.S. wants those blocked too, but the Netherlands is resisting. Financially, the numbers don't lie, China accounted for 46% of ASML's total sales in 2023 bringing in over $7 billion. Cutting off China could slash ASML's revenue and hand its monopoly power to Beijing-backed alternatives. If ASML plays along with Washington now, does it risk destroying its own future? At first glance, the Netherlands' decision to keep selling DUV machines to China might seem like defiance. But there's another layer, economic survival. Dutch officials aren't just weighing diplomatic pressure from the U.S. and China. They're protecting ASML's role as a global tech leader. The Dutch government heavily subsidizes ASML and allowing Washington to dictate its trade policy risks, making the Netherlands an economic hostage to U.S. interests. But there's another problem. Retaliation. Beijing has already hinted at blacklisting ASML if export restrictions tighten further. According to Nikkei Asia, China is stockpiling ASML machines, ramping up domestic production of alternative lithography technology, and investing $143 billion into its own semiconductor sector. The Dutch government must ask itself, if it caves to U.S. pressure now, will it still have a market in five years? Washington's strategy hinges on one assumption. Without ASML, China can't build cutting-edge chips, but that assumption is already being tested. According to a recent report by the Semiconductor Industry Association, China produced 70% more advanced chips in 2023 than the previous year, despite heavy sanctions. The Netherlands' refusal to fully comply with Washington's demands could accelerate China's ability to close the technological gap. Intel, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm some of the U.S.'s biggest chip makers are watching closely. Restrictions on China haven't stopped demand. They've just shifted supply chains. Bloomberg reports that while the U.S. banned chip sales to Huawei, Chinese companies have simply found workarounds through subsidiaries and third parties. If ASML keeps selling DUV machines, 
Is Washington actually helping China become independent faster? Each time the U.S. tightens semiconductor restrictions, Beijing responds with massive investments in self-sufficiency. Huawei's Mate 60 Pro, which features an advanced 7 nanometer processor, shocked the industry because it wasn't supposed to be possible under current export bans. Now, China is preparing to scale even further. According to Keixin Global, China's state-backed chip fund just injected another $45 billion into SMIC and Yangtze memory technologies, YMTC. Dutch semiconductor analyst Bert van der Velen notes that the longer ASML keeps selling to China, the faster China's domestic industry will evolve. If the Netherlands is keeping ASML's doors open for short-term profits, is it actually enabling China to develop the very technology that will eventually replace ASML? The European Union has struggled to maintain unity in trade policy, and the Netherlands' latest move just widened the cracks. France and Germany have publicly supported Washington's stance on restricting semiconductor sales to China, but behind closed doors, many European leaders are frustrated. Why? Because U.S. companies like Intel and AMD still receive exemptions to do business with Chinese firms. EU policymakers are asking a crucial question. If America protects its own economic interests first, why should Europe blindly follow suit? The Financial Times reports that European chip makers, including ST Microelectronics and Infineon, are quietly lobbying against full-scale bans. If the Netherlands' resistance gains traction, could it inspire a broader European rebellion against U.S. trade policy? And if that happens, the bigger question isn't just about ASML. It's about whether the West itself is breaking apart over economic self-interest. China currently controls over 77% of global battery production, but its biggest vulnerability remains high-performance semiconductors essential for EVs. Dutch company ASML holds the exclusive capability to produce extreme ultraviolet lithography machines, the key to manufacturing the most advanced automotive chips. The U.S. imposed strict restrictions to prevent China from accessing this technology, but with ASML still shipping deep ultraviolet machines, albeit at a reduced volume, Chinese firms like SMIC and Yangtze Memory Technologies have accelerated domestic alternatives. According to Bloomberg, China's EV sector is now the world's fastest growing, with domestic EV sales projected to exceed 10 million units in 2024 putting pressure on Tesla, Volkswagen, and General Motors. If China successfully closes the chip gap, it could dominate not just battery production, but the entire EV supply chain, forcing Western automakers into long-term reliance on Chinese technology. Washington expected full compliance from its allies, yet ASML's continued shipments to China, combined with Beijing's aggressive push for self-sufficiency, suggests a growing defiance within global trade networks. The U.S. Bureau of Industry and Security estimates that China increased its domestic semiconductor production by 38% in 2023 alone, outpacing predictions. SMIC, once dependent on foreign technology, recently produced a 7 nanometer chip using DUV machines, a development that U.S. officials previously deemed impossible under current restrictions. ASML's decision to maintain sales of older generation machines, even under stricter export rules, has emboldened South Korea and Japan, who now face pressure from domestic firms urging them to loosen chip export policies to avoid losing market share to Chinese alternatives. Nikkei Asia reports that South Korea's chip exports to China surged by 41% in early 2024, signaling that a global semiconductor realignment may already be underway. Despite U.S. pressure, China remains ASML's second-largest market, accounting for 46% of total sales in 2023, valued at over $7 billion, according to Reuters. Cutting China off entirely would create an immediate revenue gap that Europe's struggling semiconductor sector cannot fill. Analysts from ING Bank project that if ASML fully complied with Washington's restrictions, its revenue could drop by as much as 20% over the next two years, forcing mass layoffs and investment cuts. 
The Dutch government, which views ASML as a national asset, has been reluctant to impose a full export ban without compensatory trade agreements. However, if China succeeds in developing its own lithography industry, ASML could eventually lose not just revenue, but technological dominance. This raises a critical question. Is ASML buying time with China or risking long-term obsolescence? The semiconductor battle isn't happening in isolation. It's part of a wider economic standoff between China, the US, and the EU. The Financial Times reports that China has now placed export restrictions on gallium and germanium, key materials for chip production, in retaliation against Western trade policies. Meanwhile, Washington is preparing a $39 billion subsidy expansion under the CHIPS Act to counter China's rising influence, while the EU is rushing to implement the European CHIPS Act, worth $47 billion. This tit-for-tat escalation suggests that the ASML dispute isn't just a semiconductor battle. It's part of a much larger economic realignment. If tensions continue, we could see further restrictions on critical tech components, nationalization of supply chains, and Western firms forced to pick sides in an all-out economic cold war. If ASML continues selling restricted chip-making technology to China, U.S. trade officials could escalate by targeting European firms with secondary sanctions, similar to those imposed on Huawei suppliers. At the same time, China's state-backed semiconductor fund, known as the Big Fund 2, has committed $45 billion in new investments to build its own lithography systems, with early prototypes expected by 2026, according to Caixin Global. If China succeeds, Taiwan's TSMC and South Korea's Samsung, both reliant on ASML machines, could lose their technological edge. Meanwhile, European semiconductor firms like Infineon and ST Microelectronics are growing wary of over-reliance on U.S. policy decisions, with executives pushing for trade autonomy in closed-door meetings with EU officials. This suggests that we're not just witnessing a battle over semiconductor supply, but the possible fragmentation of the global chip industry into two competing ecosystems, one led by China, the other controlled by the U.S. and its allies. For decades, Europe played the role of a neutral economic power, but ASML's decision, whether strategic or forced, could mark the moment that changed. The U.S. expected the Netherlands to fall in line, but resistance from The Hague has shown that European nations may no longer be willing to blindly follow Washington's trade directives. Meanwhile, China is using the ASML dispute to expose divisions within the Western alliance, testing how much economic pressure it can apply before U.S. allies start breaking ranks. If Beijing successfully secures an alternative to ASML within the next decade, it won't just mark a technological shift. It will fundamentally alter the balance of global power. The Netherlands may have made a short-term decision based on trade interests, but the long-term consequences could redefine economic alliances for decades. And if ASML loses its technological edge to China, this moment might be remembered as the day the West lost its monopoly over the future of computing. If you think this was the biggest battle in the global semiconductor war, think again. Because something even bigger is happening right now, and it could change everything. A new player is emerging in this fight, one that neither the US nor China expected. We're glad you're enjoying this video. Please like and subscribe. Check out another video that is now on your screen.